slides, and I haven't even known what I'm doing. All right, so, um, let's go and take a look at. So first thing, let's go and take a look at this graph. So we're going to say like from here is the one, right? And so there's x equals one. Now it says break it up into four subintervals, right? So that means we're basically going to have. Let's see, here's going to be 1 half, here's 1 fourth, and this is going to be 3 fourths. Would you guys agree? Yes. OK. So now there's a couple different ways if we're going to break this out. There's a couple different ways we can um, approximate the area. And the first one is what we call the, the left hand method, or the left hand approximation. Left hand rectangle approximation method. And sometimes we can just do L4. Okay, so and now again, remember, guys, we're approximating, right? We're not finding the definite. We know how to do that um, in our math. But if we're just going to approximate this area, what we want to do is we want to basically take the left endpoint and draw a rectangle. So if we start, you guys can see if we kind of start at this farthest left endpoint because we're going from zero to one. If we start at this farthest left endpoint and draw a rectangle, well, it's basically like zero, right? Because there is no height there, correct? Now, we are going to still include that, so we have this. Over here, we have a point here. Draw a nice little rectangle. Here, you can go up. Rectangle. There you go. And now a rectangle. And also, we notice that, so we basically have drawn our rectangles. Now, for each of these rectangles, we need to be able to figure out the height, right? And we need to be able to figure out the width. Now, the nice thing is the width is uniform, isn't it? Like this delta x. is equal to how, what is the distance between each of these, for each of these rectangles? One fourth. One fourth. Huh? I think of this as like the x, x coordinate, so it's basically the, just the change in between each of these x, like x intervals. Yeah, change, delta, delta x. Okay, so, that, so that's the width of all these rectangles is one fourth. Well, how do we figure out the height? It's on the y-axis or the f of x-axis, so how do we figure that out? How do we figure out where that point is? Is that point equal to f of 1 fourth? Yeah, which you just, we, have a, we have a function, so we can just plug it in, right? OK, so let's go ahead and actually just write this all out. So this one has, let's do base times height for each one of these. Um, so the, base in this, or so the base in this case is going to be 1 fourth times 0 right, for the first rectangle. Plus, now again, remember sigma, we're adding each and every one of these terms. Oh, I erased it. The next one is going to be, again, 1 fourth times. Now let's go and see. This is going to be uh, the height of this rectangle is f of 1 fourth plus 1 fourth times f of 1 half plus 1 fourth times f of 3 fourths. Now, the nice thing about this method, or at least by looking at this, when we have a uniform delta x, meaning the base is the same, is it possible, guys, that we could factor out a 1 fourth here? Can we just do that? Can we factor out a 1 fourth? Yes. Yeah, and that's going to make our life a little bit easier, right? Now, let's go ahead and figure out what exactly is. Well, we're going to have 0 plus f of 1 fourth, let's just plug that into our function. So that's going to be 1 fourth squared, which would be 1 16th, plus 1 half squared, which would be 1 fourth, plus 3 fourths squared, which would be 9 sixteenths. Yes? No? Yes? If you start off with that, the 0, like for the graph, because this is called the left hand method. So you're starting from the left. Okay. So you're starting from the furthest end point on the left, yeah. and then you're drawing rectangles. We're going to do a right hand method next. So for the right hand method, you would go all the way to zero. You would no, like so uh, from the right hand method, you'd start at 1 fourth and do rectangles this way, which I'll do that next. I'll show you. Just remember from this one, you start from the furthest left point. So if you're doing the left hand rect approximation, you're starting at that end point. And you don't go to the other end point? No. No, because you're starting at that end point, you're going in there. 
Now again, remember it says four subintervals. Do we have four subintervals? Do we have four of them? Right? If you went all the way to one, well, first of all, if you do the if you do one as a left endpoint, what is the rectangle? There is nothing there. So you can't do a left endpoint at one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now let's go and simplify this. I'll just show my work here just because I know a lot of you guys hate your fractions. So this can be rewritten as sixteenths as four sixteenths plus nine sixteenths. Right? Multiply by four on the top and bottom. So then we have um, Let's see, we're going to have 13, so that's 14 sixteenths. So we have 14, so 1 fourth times 14 sixteenths. Let's see, we could divide, uh, divide that out. So divide by 2 on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to have um, 7 30 seconds. Approximation is the area. Guys agree? Now, let's look at this. Does this look like an overestimate or underestimate of the area? Underestimate, right? I mean, obviously, you can see all the areas are under the curve. We have all these open spots. And also, we could do that justification because this graph is increasing in concave up, right? So possibly, that might be something we might have to use as far as a justification as well, OK? All right, so that is the left-hand side. 